first one was a classic story about a pig who cheats death because a nerd spider took pity on him. Also, I just want to talk about this one scene in the first movie where Wilbur found out the farmers were going to kill him. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Real J. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Real J. Today, I'll be doing another video reaction called, yeah, Thought We Are Weird. Movies, Thought We Are Weird. Let's check this out and see what it's all about. Classic kids movie made in the 70s about a pig and a spider. Yeah, Charlotte's Web. Remember how it made us a lot of money? I, I mean, remember how it ended on a cliffhanger? What are you talking about? I don't think it was a cliffhanger. I didn't know. No, no, no. Yeah, big cliffhanger. It's been 30 years. Everyone wants to know what happened to that spider. The spider died, Ethan. Oh, I didn't watch it. But you got one thing right. Everyone is wondering what happened next. The first movie wasn't satisfying enough. America needs a sequel. Who would watch that? And then three years later, we can make a live action version. Now you're speaking my language, Ethan. Everyone else, you're fired. For some reason, movie producers and showrunners think that kids are stupid and don't know what good content is. They probably think that as long as a kid's show is a cartoon and it's moving, they'll love it. Well, here's the truth, Hollywood. The cartoons don't have to move, but you do need to write likable characters in a plot that actually makes sense. The only people who know what kids like these days are YouTubers. Am I right, fellow youths? Hashtag let Pokemon go to the polls. I thought I had pretty low standards as a kid, but sometimes I'd be watching a show and even I'd think, this is weird. Why does this need to exist? Why are the animals singing? One of my favorite shows growing up was Yu-Gi-Oh! And I've actually been re-watching some of the episodes while I work on videos, not because I enjoy it this time, but because it's good background noise and sometimes the show will say something that's so stupid it's good. Mokuba, what do I always tell you? If at first you don't succeed, blast them with your blue eyes again! Anyway, because I'm an adult, I bought and framed three Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And dang it, these cards are too small to even fit in the frame. I don't even know why I liked Yu-Gi-Oh so much. It was basically just anime characters playing the exact same card game over and over. Yu-Gi-Oh would be losing, he would give a speech about friendship or the heart of the cards, and then he would draw the Yu-Gi-Oh must win card. And most of the time he wouldn't even play by the rules. And then rinse and repeat that formula for 200 more episodes and four spin-offs, and you got yourself a successful anime. I think Yu-Gi-Oh was the first sign that gaming channels were gonna be a thing. Kids just love watching other people play games because they suck at them. Okay, enough about Japanese cartoons. If Yu-Gi-Oh! was able to keep my hyperactive attention span engaged, then what TV shows did I think were weird even as a kid? Keep in mind that these opinions are coming from someone who thought the Star Wars prequels were good. So... Misa take it with a grain of salt. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. To be fair, I've never seen a single episode of TMNT. From what I hear, it's a good series, but just the concept by itself was enough for my kid brain to think, this show is silly and I'm not gonna watch it. Like, come on. Ninja Turtles? That's a little weird, seeing that turtles are slow and aren't very maneuverable. Help, I'm a turtle and I can't get up. They're mutants? Okay, I guess that makes sense. And they're teenagers? Teenagers are mean to me. This is where I draw the line. Those are three adjectives that don't belong in a sentence together. And they're named after famous renaissance artists? <laughs> Why don't you just give them normal turtle names like Sheldon? Whatever. Let's go watch a real show about Japanese people playing card games. I used to think that the Powerpuff Girls was a girly TV show, so I never watched it. But then the show got rebooted and everyone on the internet was saying how much they used to love the original. And all I could think was, man, if only I wasn't a sexist baby. Do you guys remember Zabumafoo? Zabumafu was the show on PBS Kids where a lemur and these two brothers named Named the Krat Brothers would teach kids all about wild animals. I always thought that the two brothers were named the Krat Brothers, and I only just learned their real names right now when I looked up how to spell Zboomafu. Also, they have a website, and it looks like this. Anyway, one of the episodes was all about eggs. The Krat Brothers talked all about the different kinds of eggs animals lay, and then the lemur asks, What's it like to be in an egg? And then one of the crap brothers just appears in a giant egg and says, It's pretty squishy and gooey in here. And he brought a pizza with him. Pizza! I watched that episode as a kid and had two questions. One, how do you get inside the egg? And two, 
What laid him? The more I thought about it, the weirder I felt. This is how fetishes start, PBS. Can you believe my brother is inside this egg? Now, when I think back to movies I thought were weird as a kid, the first thing that comes to mind were those freaking American mouse tail ones. They're about these mice trying to immigrate to America. Good luck doing a 2017 reboot. Dirty mouse lums. Also, I have to talk about all those bad Disney sequels. They're all bad. Don't tell me, oh, I thought The Little Mermaid 2 was all right. No, they're all bad. My least favorite one was The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. I remember one time I watched both movies back to back, and just having seen the first movie, and then seeing the opening scene in the second one, I thought, what, what is this? This should be called The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I know those Disney sequels were just an easy way for Hollywood to make money, but think about how much more money they could have made if they just made good sequels. There was this one movie called Quest for Camelot, and as a kid, I liked this movie. It wasn't on my top 10, but it was all right. There was this one Griffin who I thought looked cool and had a funny voice. Precisely, precisely, precisely. However, there's one part in the movie, and if you've already seen this movie, you probably know what I'm going to talk about, where a two-headed dragon sings a song about wanting to be separated from the other dragon. There's a lot of things wrong with this song. I don't want to go too in-depth, but at one part they dress up as Cher and Elvis for some reason, except kids who watch this are too young to know or care about these people, and any adults watching this with their kids are just thinking, this is uncomfortable. Keep in mind that it takes a team of people to animate something like this. This song had to go through multiple, well-paid, professional songwriter people, and they all had to look at the scripts and go, yeah, this is definitely a good idea. The last movie that I suppressed was Charlotte's Web 2, Wilbur's Great Adventure. I don't think enough people are talking about this movie. I thought the first one was a classic story about a pig who cheats death because a nerd spider took pity on him. Also, I just want to talk about this one scene in the first movie where Wilbur found out the farmers were going to kill him, so he started crying, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I know this pig isn't even real, but that scene was the closest thing to turning me vegan. The sequel is exactly what you'd expect from a sequel made 30 years after the original to be. They did change the character design a lot. I guess all these celebrities are still doing plastic surgery. Look what they made Charlotte look like in the sequel. The reason I bring up this movie is because of a scene towards the end. So this one character just can't fit in with all the other farm animals. He's a black sheep. Literally, they made him a black sheep. He was doomed to be an outcast from the start. And then a fox has a musical number, attacks the farm, and then goes after the black sheep. The other, other white meat. But he doesn't kill and eat the black sheep right there, no, no, no. Instead, he kidnaps, or sheepnaps, the sheep and takes him to an abandoned house, as any fox would do. And then, I don't know if I'm interpreting this the wrong way, but watching this scene, I was picking up some creepy, non-advertiser-friendly vibes. The fox is basically telling the sheep, Oh yeah, I'm gonna eat ya. Mm, I'm gonna eat ya, oh yeah. I'm gonna put you in my mouth. <laughs> Just eat him already! Stop licking your lips! Look what he does with his tail, and tell me you're not picking up some sexual tension. There's even a part where the sheep started to run away, but then the fox dragged him back down. Mm -mm -mm. Where do you think you're going, sheep boy? I'm going to be a furry. If you're weirded out by this, don't worry. I was too. And also, we're all done. Those were all the movies and shows that weren't too far suppressed down for me to tell you about. I asked a friend what movies weirded them out as a kid, and they said The Hunchback of Notre Dame. W what are you talking about? That was a great movie. Get on my level, scrub. I used to watch foxes seduce their meals before they bored them. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to this video. Movies thought we are weird. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below, and share my videos. Most important thing, subscribe to my second channel, because I don't know what's going on. Subscribe to my second channel, in case. And there's a lot of reactions going on there. So thank you guys. Peace out.